Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a green drake irresistible with a nice chunky deer hair body. The hook I'm using is a size 10 partridge ideal standard dry, not too heavy but with a reasonably long shank. The thread I'm using is Vivus 50 denier GSP in white, that's my preferred thread for working with deer hair. For the tails, a small bunch of stacked moose mane fibres. I'll be using two colours of deer hair, this is the spinning deer hair from Nature's Spirit, works really nicely for this application. The wingtips are going to be some grizzly dyed golden olive hen hackle tips. And then the cock hackle is going to be Cree. Now there are some alternatives for this. A reasonable one to use would be either grizzly or grizzly dyed golden olive, or even a combination of both. It gives a really, really nice effect and works well with the olive body and those golden olive hackle tips. Here I've stacked a few of my moose mane hairs maybe 8 to 10, and I'm going to tie it in as a fairly long tail. The deer hair body is going to slightly overhang this at the tips, so I want to give it a little bit of extra length compared to what I'd do for a normal body. I'm going to tie those up the length of the hook shank, laying down a nice smooth foundation, and pulling down with the GSP thread, taking a few fibres at a time, you can break those off. If you put enough pressure through GSP, it acts almost like cheese wire. It can be a really, really sharp thread but it can be quite handy if you want to snap off hurl or snap off hair or anything like that. Taking my thread back down towards the base of the tail now. And because I'm working with deer hair and I'm going to be packing it down quite tightly, I'm going to pop in a whip finish here. And that's going to stop that thread from sliding back down the bend of the hook and taking the tail with it. This is going to anchor it so that that is the end point of my body and it can go no further. So again, pulling down quite tightly there. The first thing I'm going to be adding is some white deer hair underneath. Now working around the hook bend like this is by far and away the trickiest part of the whole procedure. The deer hair will want to spin and the hook curve is in the way. And of course, because we're working with two colours of deer hair, we want to make sure that this only stays on the bottom. So I haven't pulled down fully yet, but you can see what I mean about it wanting to rotate around the hook shank. It's worth fixing this at this point, otherwise the next clump isn't going to sit as well. So I'm just taking my bodkin and pulling those around so it's sitting nice and level underneath the hook shank. It's just the weight of the bobbin that's holding it in place at the moment. And it's not until I add this second pinch of my olive deer hair on top, only now am I going to be able to pull down with full force and flare that hair out. Notice I'm holding on to that olive hair to stop it from spinning too much around the hook shank. I'm going to work my thread forwards. If any small hairs get caught underneath, just pull down tightly and they'll be cut off by the thread. Just making sure everything's secure in the vise because I'm going to be packing it down fairly firmly later. And we're ready to put on our second clump. I find it easier to do the bottom ones first, they're the trickier ones to apply. So again coming in with my second clump of white and again making a couple of looser turns, not cinching down fully, but just letting it sit underneath the hook shank until I can come in with the olive on top. It's a very attractive way of doing these irresistible bodies. Of course, with an Adams irresistible or similar, you're aiming for it to be grey. So having it having a single colour of deer hair would work fine. But I think that this just adds a little bit of extra something. Once you've finished with the bodies, cast off, whip finish, and then cut away the GSP. That way it won't get in the way when we're trimming. Take a minute at this point to brush out the, those hairs using my little comb from Stonfo. And I didn't mention earlier, but it's really important to get all of the fuzzies and all of the short hair out when you're cleaning your deer hair ready to tie it in, otherwise it won't spin properly. Here I'm using my Stonfo razor blade holder with a nice fresh sharp blade, and I'm just doing the bulk trimming, knocking off any of those really long ends, and just building up a little bit of a cylinder shaped taper to the body. Working through, taking down any of the long ones that are getting in the way, and just being careful not to either cut the knot at the front, and taking great care not to intrude on the moose mane tails at the back. It's very, very easy to cut those through if you're not being careful. When I'm coming up to the back of the fly, in order to protect those tails, I do things manually, and I just come in with some scissors and taper it down. You can make these bodies as fat or as skinny as you like, really. I've gone for a fairly tapered one on mine, and I'll just take a bit of time off camera 
to secure everything down and get a nice trim. I've prepared my hen hackle tips as wings, taken them down just using the tips, stripping off any excess barbs, then I'm tying those in with a cross wrap technique, bringing the excess stem forwards, and then coming in with my other wing. These work really nicely as big mayfly wings. They do tend to catch the wind a little bit, so just be careful when you're casting that your leader isn't spinning up. But they look absolutely gorgeous, and I think it adds a really nice, chunky effect to an already chunky fly. The trout can't help but notice these sort of big impression that these will leave on the water. And of course, with that big deer hair body, it'll float nice and high as well. I'm going to trim away those excess stems. And you'll notice that the wings are currently sat out in a spinner kind of position. I'm going to pull those up and work my thread back, just make a couple of loops around the bottom, and they'll quite happily stay where they are, especially once they're supported by the hackle. Speaking of the hackle, that's the last material that we're going to need to tie in. I've stripped the barbs off the stem and a little bit off the far side as well, again using a cross wrap technique to leave it perpendicular to the hook shank, bringing the stem forward and securing it down before trimming away the excess. I'm using Cree here, it's got that really nice warm brown colour. Like I said, grizzly or grizzly dyed golden olive would work just as nicely. Bring it forward, be careful to avoid the wings, and whip finish. Here's a little look at the finished fly. Don't worry if the colours don't come out perfect on the body. It's about that contrast between the light and dark. This is a fun one to tie, so give it a go. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.